Today we're going to talk about how to load firmware when there's an issue on either a big tree tech type 3D printer board or others. So I wanted to point out that there's two ways to do it. You can load it with your SD card or you can load it with this device through the SWD pins on each one of these boards. Now, this method I'm not going to show you because it is not a good way to do it and can possibly brick your board. So I'm going to point out that there's at least three different size medias you can use, if not more. You can use a 128 megabit SD card. You could use an 8 gigabit or a 32 gigabit. I'm not sure about 64 and above, but I'm pretty sure they probably will work the same. Now the issue is sometimes your firmware doesn't change from firmware.bin to firmware.cur. Usually it'll occur on the very first time that you go to load firmware. So each one of these boards may have that issue and I've experienced it at least once on um, this years ago for the SKR version 1.3. Now a user pointed out or several users pointed out that they had issues so I thought I'd address this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my card reader and place this in here and show you what may be occurring in your situation. So I'm going to plug this into the computer so you may hear a beep in just a moment. Then I'm going to go over to my desktop and actually show you the drive. So on the drive, what we have right now are no files. So the formats that can be used in this case, we have FAT, which stands for File Access Table and it will work for any one of these sizes. I've already tested this to make sure, but that's one possible format that you can do to format the drive with a quick format. The other one that you can use is FAT32, which is a file access table 32, and it has to do with the size of the uh, actual blocks of memory on the board. And of course you can use these sizes as well. Now if you were to do EX FAT32 which is extended file access table it will not work for any of these sizes. The same is true for NTFS or new technology file system will not work as well. So to format it what you're going to do is I'm going to pick FAT and I'm going to then say start and it will format the drive for us. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the drive and obviously there's no files on it. So we're going to download real quick the actual version of Marlin that's currently available. So I'm going to click over here and click download and this will pull the actual file or excuse me the uh, actual firmware down for us to modify. Now I already have it downloaded and extracted over here so to extract it you're gonna do extract all and then you're going to click extract but I've already done that so we're gonna skip that step for now. Now keep in mind that there are other builds that exist here. I'm using the 32-bit version this also works for 8-bit but the situation for the firmware.bin does not exist on the 8-bit because you can directly upload it normally to the board, being your 3D printer board. Now, the other thing I have to point out is that when you see bug fix, these are currently works in progress, so they are possibly broken. So if you use one of these, keep that in mind. And of course, then they have the patched versions down here of the versions up here but I usually go with the one that's most current. So if we were to go into VS Code and we were to do let's see file open folder and go to our downloads folder and then our first Marlin folder then our second folder and then select folder we can actually open it up. 
In this case, I'm going to work with the uh, SKR version 1.3. So I'm going to go to the Marlin folder, the source folder, the core folder, then boards.h. I'm going to do a search on SKR. And you can see the board right here. So I'm going to copy this. Now there's two versions of this board. There's a turbo version and a non-turbo version. I have the non-turbo version that I'm currently working with, but I'll show you in a second how to verify what board you're working with because these are different categories of actual chipsets that you're gonna see sprinkled through here. So STM32 is probably the most common type, but there's many different variations of it. And I want you to keep that in mind but currently, I'm not going to cover that too much right now. I just want to show you what's going on here. In my basics tutorials, I do cover it for the initial board description. So in this case, I'm on the configuration.h. I'm looking for our board type. I'm going to paste in what it is. Then down here, I'm going to say negative 1 because it's a 32-bit board. 0 is for 8-bit. Note that you can also use this over in here if you would like. Sometimes when they do the display, they'll do it up here and then the board down here. You can do it in either place. You just have to be consistent with your numerical reference. Normally the board is going to be like one if you were to use it for the display. For the actual motherboard, it's negative one almost all the time time. So now that we have that set, we have to set up the actual INI file because this is set to an 8-bit board being the Mega 2560. So to do that, in this case, we're going to find the LPC 176X, which is there are two different types of chips. In this case, it's the LPC 1769, or excuse me, 68. 69 is the turbo version. And what we're going to do is then go to the platform IO folder, excuse me, platform IO.ini, and we're going to paste it here. Then I'm going to hit the actual button for the build. Now, in the case of this board, it can be directly sent to the board via the USB cable if you're to use this right here. But as you can see, there's an error in the build. So I'm going to build it a second time just in case. If I see an error on the second time, then I'll go to the very first error and try and fix it. But sometimes things build out of order. That's why I hit the actual build button a second time. So it looks like it's building right now. The yellow right here is actually a warning, so you can ignore that. It's only when it's red that there's an issue. So inside here, you can see that there's the actual build. And then we can see our firmware.bin. Now keep in mind that the firmware.elf, that's used for actual troubleshooting. So that's a special build. I'm not exactly sure how to present that to you in a logical manner. So I'm not going to talk about it at the moment. So we're going to reveal this in the file explorer. And as you can see, there's no file here right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to say send to the USB drive for D. So it's on here now. Now this is where the problem normally occurs. When you place this on your drive and then you place it into your actual um, motherboard, which I'll show you right now. If I pop this out and I place it inside of here, this is where the issue occurs. The very first time you load if there's no firmware.cur on this, it will fail when you power it and not convert to cur. So the way around that is to take this out, place it in the drive again, and then you're gonna place this inside the actual computer again. And we're gonna go back over to the desktop and I'll show you the solution. So over here, we go to the D drive. If this doesn't load on your very first load, create a file such as this. So you're going to call it firmware.cur. It's going to be an 
all capital letters. It doesn't matter about the file size because you can see it's zero. If it loads successfully, the firmware.bin up here with the date will be renamed to this and have this date for here. Then the actual file size will be down here. Now also, if you ever want to reload it, say on the same board, say you store this someplace else, you can rename firmware.bin for firmware.cur, just like you see above. And then you can reload that either on your board or another board with the same configuration. So this should solve 99% of the questions that I get on this issue. If you need any further help, there is also a Discord that will be in the description. And also I'll place a thank you note at the end of this tutorial for all my patrons and people on PayPal that have donated over the uh, years to thank them. So everyone take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.